everybody watching on Facebook. Uh, my name is Matt Abbott. This is Livewire Leeds. As you can tell, it's not quite the same as what Livewire Leeds was going to be way back on the 1st of April. Uh, we actually planned on doing it to begin with because we had no idea what was going to happen, but, but never mind. Um, so tonight we've got a fantastic bill. Uh, we have Tori Garbutt and Kevin P. Gilday plus five fantastic spoken word artists. I'm going to be hosting throughout the evening and we are encouraging donations to Hyde Park Book Club because uh, it would have been £6 a ticket. So if, if, I'm not saying you have to donate £6, but if you can afford, please make a little donation to the venue because we worked so, so hard uh, during the lockdown, like sending out parcels and the rope every day, social distancing, of course, and they really put the staff first and they're sort of a pillar of a community in Leeds. So there's a link in the Facebook event for you to make a donation. It does say Tomata but Poet Limited. I'm not conning you. I will, I will pass it on. It would just be the easiest thing to do. Um, so yeah, I, I've got a room full of people. How are you all doing? You all right? Yeah, yeah good. Hey. <laughs> Top Sorry. banana. Top. Yeah, it's going to be good, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I, like uh, as anybody else, I know Kevin. You do a bi-weekly event with Sonic Youth, don't you, on Facebook Live every second Thursday? Get that yeah. little plug in. But uh, have you, and, and Mary, you did your book launch recently, didn't you, on Instagram? I did. Yeah, yeah. I, I've done a few things recently on different sort of streams it's quite yeah, nerve-wracking yeah. <laughs> the technology is scary it's nice unpredictable thing. Okay, if your, your event was on at five past eight after the clap when does it come on now uh, just at eight now because what? just at eight we've all decided that it was all Tory propaganda and we weren't going to clap anymore <laughs> <laughs> I thought like everyone would just be sitting there waiting at eight like not knowing when it ever started no we decided that after a, a few weeks yeah. I think you have to believe that there's people out there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that always helps, to be fair. But if someone's done between 8 and 8 or 5 and people don't realise it's that, you know, you've got this weird yeah. little... That's true. It's all good. You've sorted it. I'm sorry, Kev. The clapping's a thing. <laughs> well, we're, we're having a nice little chin wag. Then the first, first performance, we self Lynn, obviously we'll start at 5 past, just to get people a chance to tune in. Some people will be sat there waiting, ready to tune in. Some people have got, ooh, what's that? Mm -hmm. So I just, like, if I put you on at 8 o'clock straight away, it's a bit grim, isn't it? You know, when people are still shuffling the chairs and, yeah. like, opening crisp packets. And Only that's mm -hmm. quite good. I was at an online conference. And um, so you know why when you're at, like, conferences or big events, when there's, like, the ushering bit? Like, when you're at an online event, they just are, like, they take over your screens. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, no more coffee time. And then they just start, they take control and you get shoved into the next session. <laughs> so like that's quite good, or they just start broadcasting. So yeah. that would have saved me a lot of time in past jobs. <laughs> well, I know, it's got its pros and its cons, but uh, as I was saying, I think before we went live, um, I know that Mary's joining us tonight from Kentish Town. Obviously, Kevin's in Glasgow. Um, Julie is on the northeast coast. Uh, Saltburn. Uh, Tor Saltburn. Uh, Saltburn. Whereabouts are you? Whereabouts are you, Pauline? I'm currently in Cleethorpes, near the sea. Oh, nice, nice. Vic, you're in Leeds, mm. I'm guessing. Yeah. And Tori, you're in Ebden Bridge? Yes, Mythe and Ride Massive. Mythe and Ride Massive, and I mean, oh. I don't, don't tell anyone, but I'm in, I'm in East London, so like... Ooh, the, 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 <laughs> oh, no. But I've got, like, I've got my Leeds United scarf in the background. So <laughs> it, it's good that we've all been able to get together and chat and do this performance. Because uh, obviously people are missing going to the theatre and they're missing seeing live events. And I do think that these online things have been great for that. Um, and just, yeah, connecting people. Uh, yeah, it's quality. So uh, does anybody have any events that they want to plug just before we get started? Has anyone got anything coming up that they want to shout about? <laughs> oh man, that's Literally, there's nothing happening. Someone made something up. Yeah, well, Sonic Youth is, Sonic Youth is still on. The Sonic yep. Youth podcast is on as well now. We have a podcast, which is every Quality. second week. So yep. Vic every week Victoria. there's some Sonic Youth content, whether it's a podcast or the Sonic Youth Social Club live stream. Live stream. And uh, live, so the podcast... Live yeah, so live. And... Uh, the podcast uh, this week has Victoria McNulty as our guest, who's an amazing Glaswegian poet. If you haven't heard her stuff, uh, go mm -hmm. check out the podcast. We have a great conversation with her, and she reads a few of her poems as well. So, yeah, check oh, it out. Spot on. Okay, great. So, we're going to start off with some of our open mic performers now. Uh, Lane, whereabouts are you based? I didn't actually check. Whereabouts are you at the moment? Glasgow. 
You are in Glasgow. I and thought you might. Right now, and that's where I normally am. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased uh, that, that, that Lynn's joined us tonight for this open mic slot. Uh, we've had a great chat before we started. You can see that everybody's turning the cameras off now. That is deliberate. They're not all leaving. Um, so if you'd like to start us off, please welcome Lynn oh, Pilkington. Well, thank you. That was so funny. You called me a spoken word artist. Um, I've not done poems in a long while. So thanks for throwing me in and doing this first. Um, so I've just got a couple of things, a couple of old ones. Um, and the first one, oh, there's my face, full screen, hello. Um, so yeah, the first one is about going back to a place um, which meant a lot to me. And then I think we'll all be going back to places after a while. Um, and I like going back to then see how I am and how I've changed, etc, etc. <laughs> So this is called Sterling, Long Time, No See. I got the long bus here. You know, the one that stops at every lamppost. I came here to find myself. An old lady struggled aboard the long bus and on seating herself motioned to the driver that she was ready to go. I'm ready to go too. I'm signaling, signaling my driver. Please pull away now, take me there. And he'll ask, where is there? And I'll reply, there is not here. That's all I've been told. I know I've been lost for a long time, Ralph. A long time now. Various sources produce substandard maps, but none of them guided me home. Through the struggling, I stumbled upon myself. There I was, innocent-eyed, quick-brained, quick -brained and filled to the brim with high standards. There, but not there. Here, but anywhere, but here. I went to the pictures and was painted the life and the image of a life I fancied, so I fashioned a fantasy based on the current biopic. I charged off to chase the new dream, while the still relevant remnants of yesterday's dramas still clutched at my ankles, still clutched at my angles, whispering, remember we too once fulfilled you. So yeah, um, that's just about going back and thinking and remembering. Um, and then... Yeah, the other one I wanted to do is about um, we should climb this mountain together. It is about partnership and also I like how it's a metaphor of a mountain because there's lots of us that have not been out in the outdoorsy places um, thinking and getting our feet muddy. Um, so just generally this one's about um, partnership and being in love because love is wonderful. Um, we should climb this mountain together. I was packed days ago. I am always prepared. You are horizontal, unlike the steep slopes ahead. They say climbing mountains isn't easy. You're not signing up for gentle doldrums. Some people are well equipped. Strong candidates will negotiate the jaggy paths, no bother. The shaky sorts will lag behind. Society throws them extra energy bars, but they still they struggle to keep up. People seem to work well in twos. When you walk side by side, you pick up the pace, but will you let me lean on you when I can no longer skip to your tune? I'm out of step with most of society. I'm going to need space to walk alone sometimes. To the others up ahead, I will yell, what is, what is it like up there? And they will say what they see, but it might feel different for you and for me. Just to carving our own way. No map is drawn yet, but here is the back you're looking to catch for now. Last one to the top buys the first round. And that is my two poems for my for my slot. Thank you for having me. Leeds. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. That was great. Did you enjoy it? Sure. Was it ner nerve wracking because you've not done it for a while? No. I, I know I stumbled over words, but that wasn't really nerves. I just had oh. a long way. No, no, not at all. I, no, I wasn't trying to. I, just because you said earlier you've not done it, so... No, oh, sorry. No, 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 that was I beautiful. Don't mind just reading out things. It's okay. And I wore when, my I wore my fancy princess slippers, so they are good luck. They're lucky charms, right? When um, when Sonic Youth starts up again, are you gonna go, are you gonna go do a slot? Oh goodness, I'm not unfortunate enough to do that. <laughs> yeah, you you will do. We'll get you on. Well, thank you, Lynn. That was that was really great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Okay, so up next is Mary Dickens. Da -da -da -da. Give me two secs. I'm just figuring out my tech. There we are. Spotlight video. Hey, up, Mary. How are you doing? Thank you. Hi there. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, 
I'm Mary Dickens, and I've just had um, a little book out with Burning Eye, which met, uh, Matt mentioned earlier, and I'm going to do a couple of poems from that. Um, and I'm going to start, I don't know, some poems that you've written a, a while ago, they seem really sort of poignant and prophetic, given all the weird stuff that's happened to us. Uh, and this is one of them, and it's called Love on the Internet. Our love is too vast for an email. It can't be condensed to a tweet. It's handy to Skype, but it's only a hype compared to the thrill when we meet. It can't be configured in pixels, reminders of places we've been. It can't be summed up in a soundbite displayed on an LCD screen. Our love is much more than mere data, too complex, too messy, too fraught. It can't be backed up in a server or plugged in a USB port. We can't close the distance between us. There are too many miles to transcend. These digital fragments are all that we have and all we can do is click send. Thank you. Um, this next one, um, we've all been shopping quite a bit on the internet recently and sometimes you just have to send things back. And what annoys me is you, you get a drop down menu that gives you a limited list of reasons why you're returning the item. And none of them are the real reasons why you're returning the item. So I wrote my own version and it's called Honest Return. I am returning this item because, please select from the menu below. I am returning this item because I am much fatter than I think I am. I'm returning this item because I was drunk when I ordered it. I'm returning this item because I was stoned when I ordered it. I'm returning this item because I only needed it for a party. I'm returning this item because I'm not clever enough to assemble the flat pack. I'm returning this item because I misunderstood the dimensions. This baking tray is only big enough for one potato. I'm returning this item because I misunderstood the dimensions. My garden is too small for a 30 foot obelisk. I'm returning this item because it fails to fill the aching void inside me. I'm returning this item because I'm renouncing the, the destructive and unsustainable trappings of Western capitalism and going off grid to live in a yurt. I'm returning this item because I did not mean to order a pack of 200. I am returning this item because I have absolutely no money left in my account. Thank you. Um, last one, just a little one, and it's a title poem of um, ha um, Happiness FM. That's called cool. Happiness FM. Happiness is a radio station you chance upon that plays music so sublime you are immediately transported. Next day, you try to find it, but no matter how long you scan the airwaves, it's drowned by crackling interference. Sometimes you hear snatches in the background, so you try and try again, and again, and again, and again, until you realize that only fate decides the frequency of happiness FM. And some people have better reception than others. Thank you very much. That's it from me. Thank you, Mary. That was lovely. So that's Happiness FM. That's published by Burning Eye Books. That's and we right. can get it, get it on, <laughs> online from Burning Eye and 
um, have you got any on your website? And, and, and from me. Um, I'll try yeah. and put something in the comments box later. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you, Mary. That was yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. My I'm pleasure. going now. <laughs> <Okay>, bye. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I was going to say, um, as well as donating to Hyde Park Book Club, obviously, if you want to support anybody who's got books out, including Mary's new book, Happiness FM, then please do get involved. Um, okay, so up next is Pauline. Let's see, Pauline. Da, 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 da. How are you doing, Pauline? You all right? Let's have a look. I think your sound's off. It's... Oh, hey. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? You all right? Um, yeah. Um, I was really excited to... Um be part of this um it's great i really enjoyed listening to lynn's poems lynn's new to me and i'm really glad you read happiness fm mary it's my favorite one in the book um i'm going to read uh, i'm based in bristol really um and i'm going to read um a poem it's kind of about bristol but i feel that there's a kind of portal between all the community cafes like the Hyde Park bookshop and uh, various places in urban areas and uh, last time I went to the Hyde Park bookshop I saw um, Rachel Dad playing I don't know if anybody else has been there but she's from Bristol anyway this poem's called Hands Off Stokes Cross Stop this brutal gentrification, daily process, slow creep, jerk stepped infiltration of our loved shabby streets with bland wash, glazed panes, sleek steel, wobbly fonts mimicking homespun vernacular, taking down the car spray, metallic buzz cut signage, breaching Turbo Island and the cellophane flower shrine of love to jammer. Leave these streets, their side to side, Sambuca shot shambles. Send Rita's curry chips as mail art. Prefer a white paper bag of fresh pakoras to a slate plated, just splattered steak. Saw off meat liquor's co option of art deco lines of the heating shop. Now the offshore investors pick, pick, pick at the bones of Hamilton House. Development by stealth. Leave this jumble ferment, car horn, sound jangle. Take five all-nighters, crofters' rights. Silver threaded hand-knitted jackets Hug lamppost by Nine Tree Hill. And this is, I've got two more short poems. This is my lockdown poem. It's kind of a counter to Happiness FM, but it's um, the route to happiness. It's called um, How Do You Shift Depression? You turn it into concrete and chisel its face slowly. You name all of its parts, sadness, grief, envy, rage, shame, and own them as you own your hair or your fingernails or the dance you make through the world. You sit by the water and listen, suspend disbelief like a tightrope to tiptoe your dreams. You breathe until your heart is open. Those simple things no one taught you. And the final poem, I've got to get used to saying this because I have actually got a book coming out from Burning Eye in the autumn and it's called uh, Spirograph. Um, after those kind of kids toys that you get um I actually managed to buy one in a charity shop which is very exciting um anyway it's a very short poem spirograph a child unwraps her present on birthday morning plastic filters in neon and rose like vintage aviator glasses 
inserts her pen, starts patterns of not quite repetition, scrawls from neatness, explores distortion. My friend says spirograph, but he means spirometry, the measurement of breath in lungs that are losing function. Saturn's hard return takes 30 years. Our bodies replenish in seven. I'm moving out of reminiscence row as the wheel of change becomes a spiral. Thanks for listening. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that, Pauline. So is, is the book available to pre-order now? Um, I think it will be soon on the Burning Eye website. Cool. It's, cool. Thank you. Thanks for Lovely. the Thanks, uh, Pauline. chance to read. No, thank, thank you very much. That was great. Um, wow, what a start to the event. Uh, three brilliant performances there from Lena, Mary and Pauline. Um, so, yeah, check out Pauline's book. It's, it's going to be out on Burning Eye Books in October. If you don't already, you should follow Burning Eye Books on every platform. They are uh, one of the leading um, publishers of spoken word poetry uh, and alternative poetry in the UK. They're absolutely fantastic. So please do follow Burning Eye Books. Um, right, OK, so up next is our first feature act, uh, Toria Garbo. Um, Toria is a poet and educator from Nottingley. Uh, deprived ex mining town in West Yorkshire. Um, she burst onto the scene in 2014 and made an immediate impact. Her 2016 album, Hot Plastic Moon, came out to critical acclaim, followed by her debut poetry collection, The Universe and Me, in 2018 on Wrecking Ball Press. Um, I should say, Hot Plastic Moon is available on CD and download by Nymphs and Thugs. Um, Toria toured the UK and Europe with Dr. John Cooper Clark. Uh, from 2016 to 2019. Uh, she was featured in a Guardian article on the rise of the new poets, has featured a lot on BBC Radio 4, and has also written for stage. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to introduce Toria Garbo. How are you doing, Toria? You all right? Yeah, hello. Am I on? You are on, yeah. Okay. Ace. Big thumbs up. Um, so I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm going to read some things tonight. I thought this would be a nice opportunity to um, maybe read things that I wouldn't um, ordinarily read or perform. So this one, this first one's called Day Seven. You cannot save the world, sweet child. You cannot make your mum come back or your dad less violent. I see you writing diaries, praying, crying, staying silent. It's okay to speak. Yeah, it's okay to say, stop, I don't want it. None of it is your fault and you cannot fix it. It gets better, sweet child. It gets better and you will grow out of your puppy fat armor. You'll get skinny and tall and loud. You'll attract the wrong attention and fall black eyed and red lipped, screaming into the wrong crowd, but you can still say no. Oh yeah, you do not have to fuck them all to spare their feelings. Do not have to lay there wincing, open leg and staring up at our tech ceilings. I want you to know, I want you to know that I love you, that I love you exactly as you are, that you are enough small, Thing. Go to your grandma's and read books. Let yourself stay in. Keep your lungs and conscience clean. Sweet thing. Whatever you do, whatever you do, just don't fall for him. And um, and here's another one that I, that I do. I don't usually um, read. I take you to the train station toilets in Leeds and it takes longer than it should for you to have a wee. This long complex routine of tearing and wiping and flushing and wiping and tearing and flushing and wiping and today tears run as you go. At first, a gentle moan that grows raw and animalistic as though at any point you might tick. Grip my arm and kick, rip your hair from its roots and spit. And then you laugh. 
blast the taps and interact with the water. Mesmerized as if it were the sea. You press the blowers one for each hand and stand delighted. Feel the tornado sweep your soul and love rage from the cave of your belly like home. This trip to York lays ahead. And I pray to God and my stepdad Chris in my head, please let it be smooth. Please, please God, without the shower at home to calm your mood. Yes, we are vulnerable in this open space. What if there's a meltdown? What's our just in case? I flash back to Christmas day and watch normal families race cars in the park. park. You strip and leg it and I restrain you on the grass while you kick and punch and cry and laugh and folk look embarrassed and I'm desperate for help and nobody, nobody, nobody asks. A few years back you rode feral and naked in my jeep and I drove us to McDonald's after a night of smearing and flooding and wailing and two hours sleep, yeah, charged up with anger and ADHD. You opened the passenger door and tried to jump free, enjoyed my fear, laughed hysterically at me. And today you sang let it go as plain as day or oh, you have come a long long way and every small achievement is huge today you joined a queue and you waited in line with the other kids and we wondered if anyone would notice your special needs and nobody did and we just wish that you'd fit in and sometimes we're glad you don't. You show us another way to live this life. You show us that there is hope and so we carry on. Last week you smashed my telly cause you'd rather things lay flat. At first I shouted, then I cried, yeah, you must be used to that and I love you. Oh, how I love you. That calm, peaceful look you get when you tune right in. When your eyes connect with mine, the way you cheer with both hands and an open mouth when you win. And sometimes we accidentally steal stuff from shops because there's not enough time to pay. And you whiz through life, shoeless and sockless, twiddling and tapping in a bag of equally inflated balloons as you go on your way. And today, today I'm pushed too far. I was spent up in my mum's car and I watched her, my mum, up all night, dogging on fucked and I've had enough. I've had enough. And I carry that way of my mum's disappointment that I do not do, that feeling that I am not enough to be of any use to either one of you. And I look at other parents, normal parents, at the end of what they think is the end of their week and I think how lucky they are that they'll grow out of it that their exhaustion and frustration is just a passing phase that they can pick theirs up at any point and walk away okay so Okay, so I wrote this next poem um, during lockdown, I think, and it was over Easter. My, my eldest son is 13 now, and I guess it felt like a realisation, and uh, it's about that. You're bigger now. You take up space. A squeaky shovel digging your voice deeper, a stink in your pits and spots on your face. You're bigger now. Yeah, but you still delight in my Easter egg hunt. Despite grunts, it would be far too easy. Do not underestimate me, son. I will baffle you with riddles all day long. You're bigger now. Don't hug me not much no more. But today... At the end of the hunt, I opened my arms and you opened yours too and hugged me so tight that I knew, despite your resistance and insistence, you are, after all, still you. 
This next one that I'm going to read is um, it's just a little scribble actually, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to read it, but you'll have to just bear with me. I seem to have lost it. We'll move on. This is an old one too. And um, for a little while, I lived in Kergate um, in Wakefield on Burner Street. And uh, this is an old poem that I found earlier today. Called, just called Kergate. Kergate. You attached me like an umbilical cord, fetal and unformed to your mother city. Drip fed me on Dole, Jack Fulton's frozen omelettes, Nirvana and whole, housed me hungry and kicking till I was whole. Then pushed me out, fully formed and screaming, ungraceful and impatient, straight onto stages, down basements, in players, in all of their faces. We live this side of the subway. The dirty outskirts, a three-storey terrace with no central heatings or curtains, a carpet that looked ripped up from a pub, too small for the floor, lost like a hanky, sinking in mud. Plenty of room though for amps and guitars, a mattress, some candles, an artex ceiling covered in glow-in-the-dark stars, a pink glass ashtray from Poundland, a centrepiece of glamour and cheap. This home on Berners Street for 50 quid a week, Kergate, where I sobbed and sobbed on your social security steps when they stopped my doll, prayed to the universe, don't make me go home, where we got trains to Leeds, stood in rain and smoked on open platforms, cocky and soaked, undercoat, swigged body and choked, stumbled in heels, in lipstick, in limbo, in fake furs, in that crazy, crazy love that even now still hurts. I'm feeling dead nostalgic. I'm feeling like I um I'm feeling like I just want to read some old poems. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, this one's called Blue Rooms. Blue Rooms. It's been two years since we met. And I'm back in blue room, supping strong, supping strong Jamaican stout and writing about how waiting for you is one of my favourite things to do. I'll buy you one when you arrive, watch you smile and get loose, turn every single head in room. We might even have two in a packet of crisps. And that first time we met here, my parker stank of skunk. And you said, yeah, you there, you said there are worse things to smell of, Garbert. And I'm glancing through a window for your shape and mop and swag, for your skinny jeans and dockers and merchandise bag. But when you arrive, there's this look in your eyes that says, something, something, mate. And I take on your pain. I take on your pain like a sponge in rain. We sit heavy together and eat. We talk about ambition, adventures and dreams, and we sigh for the loss of those that we love and must leave. Okay. I um, found that bit of paper that we're looking for earlier, so perhaps I'll read it. I'm not giving too much of an intro, but um, this, one's, this one's called Let Me Out. I made you a birthday card. Caught bits of books, black and white snaps of cool stuff, Marilyn Monroe and Courtney Love. I stuck in this bit about Aries being good lovers, about how Aries are dead naughty undercovers. We could never really speak about that in person, you know, we couldn't. I made my words lean left like yours. You made every letter count. But you were screaming, weren't you? Let me out, let me out. 
let me out. Yeah. I'd like to say this is going to be the more cheerful section of, uh, of the evening. It's probably not, but um, this next one's called Nights of a Breathing. And I had the massive honour of um, sharing this piece with Julie Hesman Dog recently. So I'll check this out on YouTube. And uh, it's called Nights of a Breathing. Nights of a Breathing. Leaving day behind, dreaming up plans, dreaming about gypsy caravans or bicarbonate soda. For checking your phone. Like a pulse. Finding thoughtless awareness in the teachings of Tower Tower, mixing vegan mayo with chickpeas, eating avocados. We are all them weird little brown bits, please. And when writing dries up and your cup's empty and words don't want to lack anymore, you could always watch Come Dine With Me or Don't Tell Brides. Sometimes you've got to swallow your pride and embrace it. Face it, love. You're not a proper poet. Put you, oh, for fuck's sake. Face it, love. You're not a proper poet. Yeah, we're gonna have to move on from that poem, man. I've had a com I've had a complete fucking head fuzz. Uh, yeah, that's what happens sometimes. So we're gonna move on from that poem now. It's been a difficult day, and uh, my head went sideways. So um, I'm gonna move on to a different poem, and this poem is about. Um, it's a little bit about growing up in Nottingley in the 1990s. And it's a little bit about Margaret Thatcher and it's a little bit about suicide and uh, it's a little bit about heroin and it's called No Matters Now. I just remembered that line that I forgot before. In Notla, we smoke smack for pain to hide the blame and guilt and shame of unemployment. We play guitars and gaze at stars to feel warm and safe and happy. We're just grungers and flower children, these 90s moped lovers and swaggers who pile into transit vans and blag it into Glastonbury. Our art is beautiful. It's Hendrix and Pixies and 60s psychedelia and Cecilia is breaking our hearts, man. She's breaking our fucking hearts. Oasis Arts, Tinnies and Flares, Britpop Blast and Blares through Warwick Estate on Carnival Day. We win goldfish and then we eat them for days. Act a twat in front of Mayor of Ponte. I kick this and I kick that. Our nasal tones rate suited the man. My mate Roachy, fucking mad for it, man. He showed me this trick with his fist in pissing down rain in park. Wheeled invisible umbrellas over his head and stayed hard till dark, dry as my nana's scones, mate. Guys, I've got to fucking show you this. We've got, I've got a pizza delivery man outside my house right now knocking. Please bear with me. I know this is really unprofessional, but it's fucking, it's happening right now. Toy, you got to eat, mate. you got to eat. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I, like, I, I heard that knocking and I thought, I wonder what that is. I'll try and hold it together and then it will, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually working. <laughs> Mate, you've got to eat, haven't you? you got to eat. <laughs> what, what, I, what pizza have you got? What flavour? Uh, pepperoni. Spot on. <laughs> Listen, I don't feel like we're going to pick up the momentum of that last poem. I know. I, I, feel, know. Like, I feel like I'm going to have to move on from that now, Matt, to be honest with you. It's up to you, mate. Maybe you could pick it up at the end or something if you want. You, it, you start of stopped at the dryest me on the scones, mate, which I guess is a bit of an halfway point in the poem, but... I feel like, you know, I, you know I, listen, I were, I, the guy was knocking on the window there. I know, I know. I know. What, what are you going to do? You know what I'm I mean? Gonna, what are you going to do? We're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, be really professional about it and finish the poem. Yeah. All right, mate. This would never happen in a, in a live situation. 
whenever on stage with a pizza delivery man knock <laughs> all right we're gonna i'm gonna do the i'm gonna do the poem again because i feel like it would be uh i feel like it would be weird to not okay okay we win goldfish and then we eat them for dares Act a twat in front of me, a ponty, our kid this and our kid that, our nasal tone rate suited man, can we make Roachie? Fucking mad for it, man. He showed me this trick with his fist in pissing down rain in park. We held these invisible umbrellas over his heads and stayed out till dark, dry, as my nana's scones, mate. You were this. Ballerina boy in a hat. On a mission to Brov Woods, we a guitar on your back, we weed and beer and stories and smack. An all time in world to do mad stuff like that. No matters now, mucker, no matters now. That night, you walked home from your dad's. You didn't make it past railway tracks. Were you acting fucking stupid? Did you lay down to look at stars and fall asleep? Or did you weep and wait for death to take you? Mate, I wish that I'd been with you. Cause I'd have held my fist above you and kept you dry. Okay, I've got that in the end. <clears throat> Matt, did you just say what a cunt? No. All right. Um, this next one's called The Universe and Me, and it's about it's the it's the name of my book, and it's about a time in my life that um, I moved out of Nottingley into the sort of like semi-rural outskirts, and uh, yeah, it's called The Universe and Me. That in between space after school before tea, just sunshine and telly and seti and me tired and happy and hollow and free just sunshine and telly and setty and me a waft of snags and mash and that comes curling across room and my mum's making up hot words to her night in brick pop too and she's like girls who are boys who are boys who are girls who are did, did it d you and me baby or bless the little socks off the soft and pink and cotton she probably had a bob the on but don't ask us i've forgotten she's cute and small and mumsical a twirling ballerina she's andy pandy bill and ben in our living room arena oh my mom my mom she's chopping spam she's feeding our chihuahua she's teaching me the elegance of matriarchal power she's spinning plates on roller skates and serving me a smile She's sat her ass on the toilet, so she'll probably be a while. It smells of snags and peas and mash and tastes like bisto gravy. It sounds like blur, it feels like fern, it's beer a back tongue, baby. It looks like suns and moons and stars and giant yellow teacups. It feels like docks and knee eye socks and Marks and Spencer's sea cups that in between space after tea before bed, when you're meant to do your own work, be watching friends instead. Listening to Jim Morrison and floating out your head in a higher dimension than Notla. Puffing on a bifter on a pink blow up settee in that in-between space before bed and after tea. Praying for forgiveness and praying to be free. Just the sunset and the moonlight and the universe and me. Okay. Matt, are you there? Yeah. How, how are we doing for time? Uh, well, it, there's meant to be two minutes left, but I know you've had a few delays with pizza and that. So if you want to, we've got a bit of time <laughs> spare. If you want, if you, you know, if you want to do a few minutes more, it's up to no, you, mate. Gonna, uh, yeah, no, that's cool. I'm going to finish on this one. Um, I had, I had postnatal depression after, after I had my first son, and um, this poem I wrote last year on uh, his twelfth birthday. I had a realization, and it's about that, and it's called Good Man. Eden, today you are 12. Two giant silver balloons, a one and a two suspended like moons. 
this daft animal song plays by accident on YouTube instead of happy birthday and I just laugh. For once I'm not crushed by imperfection, in fact, I prefer it. Your brother says, cause it's your birthday, you can punch me on arm. And you do. And that birthday buzz is snuffed like a candle. He cries and you're too hard on yourself, you'd learn it from me. But this time I don't react. Today I am older too. Instead, I hold space for peace and calm and like all pain, it passes with forgiveness and acceptance and strong arms. We go out for breakfast, tell tales over toast. This waitress tells me about her son. We talk about all our sons, those sons we mother on behalf of others. She says, I can tell you're a good man. And for the first time, for the first time, I let it land. I am, I am, I am. Thanks very much. Thanks for your patience with the old pizza delivery that was, situation. That was beautiful, mate. Thank you so much. You were brilliant. I'm really pleased you finished uh, Not Matters Now as well. Obviously, it's such a powerful poem, like. Thanks, um, Matt. Yeah, I'm not thanks, expecting mate. that. I try, I've got, you know, I tried to time it so that the pizza would be here before the gig. And, you know, that's what happens when you're a single mum with two kids trying to no. win another book. Absolutely, mate. I can't fault you. Like, I hope you enjoy your pizza afterwards. You're a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> love you Matt love you too mate well done that was great that in a bit long right. I'm going to see if Jack's about let's have a look hey up Jack how you doing mate oh yeah I'm good. really good man oh, how oh, you doing yes, here we go yeah good mate good good um so, so obviously I'd part book club you you've been working really hard haven't you I said earlier you've sort of been like a pillar of a community looked after your staff you were doing deliveries and stuff in lockdown like what's it been like has it been yeah, it's been it's been kind of crazy, really. Um, I mean, I don't think wholly bad. I think probably like a lot of people, there's been some some kind of plus points that have uh, come from it. It's been a real sense of kind of solidarity between lots of people, definitely in the city and uh, yeah, around here. I, th I think the hardest bit was probably the first few weeks before the furlough started, um, and the government was telling people not to go to venues, and we were just like, well, what what do you want us to do? You know, we've got people who've got kids, uh, we've got people who you know have got rent that relies on them getting hours but, but as soon as the furlough came like a lot of pressure came off and yeah it's been kind of nice really I mean it's probably the least I've worked in April there was a period where probably the most headspace I'd had since I was about 15 so that was kind of nice right yeah 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 how about you how yeah, I get you. well I mean I, I've not had the same pressures as you obviously I don't have staff like who are dependent on a wage or whatever but like I've, I've been working just as much as I usually do just without my travelling so <laughs> Bit weird, but um, but and yeah, you've got I, obviously hair. I said everything you've done. You've got facial hair as well, which is uh, like up until recently, it was like, did you ever watch Eerie Indiana? You might have been slightly too young for Eerie Indiana, but there were a couple of people that slept oh. in Tupperware boxes and they never aged. And until you've got facial hair, you're a bit like that, but now you've got facial hair, yeah. I'm, I'm betraying my personal brand, never mind, but um. <laughs> But now I've seen everything you've done on social media, like, and obviously we're asking people tonight to donate to Hyde Park Book Club. Like yeah. you were sending out beers in the post, you were sending out books. And now obviously I know you're doing your social distancing, people can book a table. It's really incredible what you've done. And, and obviously being in a city that's going to have a Premier League football team as well. I'm sure that feels good. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, you would have loved it down at Ellen Road on uh, the night the other, the other night. I went down there and uh, bumped into Kerr and uh, Nathan from The Brood and... Uh, yeah, it was an amazing atmosphere, amazing. But but just so yeah. good for the city as well. And and I, and I think, you know, there's been loads of things that have got better in the last 10, 15 years in Leeds. It's a better city for lots of people, but probably lots, lots of football fans, really, from, you know, areas like we grew up in. Like, it was just like something for, for, I don't know, those people, really, as well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's all sort of coming together nicely at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, it's great, it's great. There's a good, there's a good atmosphere in the city, to be honest. I mean, I think Leeds has been kind of, you know, probably luckier than like definitely in Liverpool and Leicester and bits of London. I think I've probably had a harder time through this. Leeds, I think it's just been a bit lucky, really. Uh, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Well, um, keep doing what you're doing. We are part book club. Obviously, we would love this event to have been there 
on the first of April yeah. or tonight or whatever. But obviously, we're going to do more stuff there. Like this is only just part of the series. So yeah, we love Hyde Park Book Club, and I'm sure a lot of people ah, watching. I love it. Uh, I love that Laura's sat out in the garden with a table and candles and a bit of food and that, pretending she's there. And like, I know a lot of people watching this really love the venue, so we look forward uh, to nice. getting it going again. Yeah, well, much love, Matt. And yeah, thank, thanks to everyone. Yeah. Great to see everybody, as, as always. Cheers, mate. Nice one. Nice one. Cheers, Matt. Cool. So that was Jack, Jack Simpson, who, if you didn't catch the drift, uh, Jack owns Hyde Park Book Club, which is obviously where tonight's gig was meant to be. Um, and up next, we have Vic, who goes to Hyde Park Book Club quite a lot. He's a great supporter of the venue, uh, lives in Leeds, does a lot of work there. Um, why is my phone doing that? Um, yeah, how are you doing, Vic? You all right? I'm, I'm all right. And just to kind of echo what you were saying about Hyde Park Book Club, it's an absolute pillar of the community. So, you know, if people haven't donated tonight or even haven't gone along and kind of, you know, had a brew or a drink outside, do go along and support it because they're doing, Jack and the team are doing kind of amazing things. Yeah, they're amazing, aren't they? Um, you did your first ever performance at High Park Book Club, didn't I you? I did, yeah. And I was due yeah. to do my second performance as part of this event, um, but obviously it got cancelled. It was the first week of April, wasn't it? So Yeah, yeah. Um, and and really sadly, it was going to be the event that I was going to bring some young women along to um, because I'm sort of trying to get more young people into writing spoken word and poetry. But, you know, I'm sure that will happen at some point. It definitely will. There's no question about it. We absolutely love High Park Book Club, so... Um, well, I shall uh, hand you the floor. I shall stop okay. waffling and let you do your thing. Right, OK. So as we say in Yorkshire, I am bobbing my pants a little bit. So I'm hoping that my nerves don't overtake me. Um, I am going to read two poems and um, I'm currently working on a collection of poems about my experiences as working as a school counsellor with young people in Leeds um, over the last 12 years. This is one of the first poems I wrote, and really it's a comment on how the fact that we need lots more spaces for young people to be talking about feelings um, and providing those opportunities to them. Uh, I've written it kind of in the tone of uh, what I've experienced from young people so far. It's called Feelings Miss. Feelings Miss, are you taking the piss? Does anyone really give a shit? I've got double maths in a bit. I mean, Feelings Miss. Do you really want to look at this? I'm not sure even I know what's in it. Feelings, miss. Like, how do we start? I know what they are, but is there a textbook book or out? Feelings, miss. Well, they said it was to look at me crap. Are about here. I guess you're all right in that. Feelings, miss. All right, I'll get it go. But I'm just saying I'm bare scared of what it'll show. Feelings, miss. Well, I thought it would be shit. You what? I just did. I didn't even realise it. Feelings, miss. It's all right, this counselling, isn't it? That's that one. Um, and this is a kind of a lockdown inspired poem. What I found about everybody else, um, but I know a lot of people are kind of saying it's really nice because I might have more time to kind of connect to nature and be more mindful. But I was very aware that there were lots of kind of really simple things that I was missing. And I felt like I wanted to capture them in a poem. Um, so this is called Things I Never Knew I Needed. Sensation of shiver over shared tales of others. The bucky based halitosis of the beer puller. Smell of urine blocks and tobacco smog. The welcome blunt force of a body heat fog. Coffee lovingly held, gently dripped by another. The pleasure of positive to the parmesan offer. Crowded sports stadiums and the hypnotic swell of a crowd. The innocent shrieks and laughter of a children's playground. Dripping swimsuit emitting chlorinated odour. The breast leavened harumph of nearby waiting shopper. Apologetic sidestep of an accidental human bump. And the chitter chatter of a cafe home. Walk by inhalation courtesy of the nicotine addicts, petrol ridden odour of sitting in traffic, fingertip greys of coins given in change, collective ceiling swept drip of a crowded gig, reassuring arm squeeze in a moment of distress, the chink of a beer filled, spittle filled glass, olfactory intrusion of another's broken wind, taste of the toxic late night kebab heroically binned. Hand gestured thank you from a fellow driver, 
head back laughter detailing the dentistry inside them. Brush of an eyelash from a flushing cheek, leaning in so close I feel your speech. Things I never knew I needed, and yet I would sacrifice to have you hold me once, twice. Muscle on muscle, flesh on flesh, pulling me closer and taking my breath, placing the cheek against your chest, succumbing to the nuzzle into my neck. Overdosing on the oxytocin, mainlining the serotonin, flooding this body of mine, liberating, intoxicating, suffocating, sublime, remembering with tenderness, hugs, your hugs, I miss. Thanks, Matt. That was beautiful. That was so nice. That was great. The, that, I, I, that second poem, like, I, I, obviously I've heard the first one before and that second one was just stunning. That was great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Really appreciate it. You're a star. Okay, so oh, uh, our second open mic performer is uh, Julie Easley. Um, I recently announced Julie uh, as coming up second in a, a, a poetry competition. Um, Coming third, I think, in a poetry competition. Yeah. I'm going to do um, that poem. Are you going to do that poem? I love that poem. I that am, poem yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah, we, we, I think, was it, um, it was near, near Whitby, wasn't it, the first time we met? Was it? Uh, um, it was, Gothland. yes, it, it was yeah. Gothland in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, was that really like, fantastic. Like an army hut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it um, was. And yeah, you and blew me it, away that night. And uh, yeah, sorry, go on. Well, so did you. And then again in um, Middlesbrough. Yeah, when I, yeah, when I had my did you, when I had Kev with me, my did you do player? Yeah, that, that, that was really good. That, that was yeah, beautiful that. as well. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Uh, most, most importantly, in Gothland, like my mum loved you as well, and my mum is a very, very harsh critic, and she thought you were oh, brilliant. So, oh, that yeah. makes me feel so, happy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I shall uh, hand it over to to Julie. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. This is fantastic. Um, I'm going to start off. Um, Matt just recently said. Um, about a poem that came in third place. It was a little video for Project Hope and uh, it got third place and I've never won an award for a poem before. So I have to do this one. And this poem is about me being single and looking at people. And it's a poem about love, really, about hope and love. And it's called Single Woman Gazing. I always gaze at couples. Sometimes for far too long to be considered normal. It's like some weird thing wired in my mind that makes me want to stare. A desperate need for desire, perhaps, or a perverse sense of voyeurism. My eyes avert at the mismatched, expert as I am at couplings. I choose my muses with precision, though it's not an exact science, I must add. I couldn't churn out a step-by-step -step guide to proper couple spotting, but the signs are there in the simplest of gestures. You might think, what does she know, this single woman gazing? What right does she have to assume we are seamless? And I would look you in the eye and tell you I know love. And I would look you in the eye and tell you I know love doesn't send you out into the world broken. And this watching I do, it soothes the part of me that aches. It soothes me to see that love isn't about control, that love exists beyond a fist, that love can hold you close without suffocation. I see that love can be almost perfection and shameless as I am, I gaze. Thank you. Messed that up a little bit, but hey, that's live for you, isn't it? So the second poem I'm going to do, I just wrote this today because I want you to do something different, something new. Um, and this is response. This is in response to the new health kick from um, our fantastic prime minister. And uh, it's in response to a, a tweet I saw by one of the Reese Mogg crew. I'm not sure which one it was. I think it was the wife or the sister or somebody. Um, so this is called Let Them Eat Chips. And so I, I'm going to read this one because I've just um, I've just written it and I don't know it really. Let them eat chips. Common sense is cheap these days. Just ask the rich. 
They'll chuck in their opinion, their two pennies worth for free. They'll say, the poor can't budget, except for fags and booze and huge TVs. Common sense is cheap these days. Just ask the rich. They'll line up in their taxpayer limos for the latest photo op. For selfies at the food bank where the poor can get their spuds and rummage an excellent choice of tins for something to go on toast. They'll say, food poverty is so in vogue, they'll flood their Twitter feed, the smiling elites with thumbs up, giving nourishment for a fee. Common sense is cheap these days, just ask the rich. They'll ask, how is poverty exhausting when there are charities galore, handing out loads of freebies? when you don't have to cook anymore. There's no cook packs, tins of fruit, bags of apples for 60p. Food is everywhere, they'll say, and most of it's for free. The poor can feed a family of five quite comfortably. Common sense is cheap these days. Just ask the rich. They'll say the poor aren't poor enough for their sympathy or help. They'll piss it up the wall, they'll say, or spend it all on fags. They'll make all the wrong decisions, the problems plain to see. The poor don't need that luxury stuff, like, of cho like choices of what to buy. A tin of beans or the heating on, a loaf of bread or pay the rent, a bag of spud or frozen chips. Common sense is cheap these days. Let them just eat chips. Thank you. Hope that was all right. That was beautiful, Julie. Thank you. That was so good. Uh, it's uh, like, and it comes up, obviously when they're doing the eat out, help out thing as well. And I, I'm, we're seeing so much stuff about how cheap McDonald's is and how cheap, and then at the same time they're saying, oh, you, you know, obesity is a problem. It's mad, I isn't know, it? It's mental. Yeah, I know. Anyway, that was my little rant on it. Well, and, uh, I thought you were great. Want, can I just add that um, Diverse, which, I know, which Toria headlined one time, which was fantastic. It was so amazing. Um, that's been on a hiatus since, obviously, March. But that will be back at some point in the future. It's just um, I'm, not as, I'm not as good as you online, so I'm a bit like, ooh, putting it online. But that will be back. You, you got some... Did you get some funding? Is that right? I'm no, sure I, I saw... Didn't, I saw, I didn't, I, didn't oh, get any oh, of the sorry, funding. But... Well, it was funded by Apples and Snakes up, to, up until April. So oh, we did the, course, yeah. the very last one, which was going to be a massive celebration ended up uh, as an online event um right. but the funding stopped in april so uh and then the arts council right. funding i didn't get any but i'm going to apply now because it's um reopened it's back open Hopefully. again I, but i saw i saw a post you did on twitter recently saying that you had some events planned so that's fantastic so it's diverse poetry on yeah twitter. yeah it'll be um, it'll be online but i'm just waiting to get a little bit of funding so i can you know pay some poets <laughs> top banana it's hard, cool. isn't it, when you yeah. Uh, no, yeah, it is. It is, hard. it is hard. Well, that sounds ace, Julie. Nice one. I'm really pleased to hear that. Yeah. Cool. So, thank you thank for you. having me. Oh, thanks for coming on. That's my pleasure. Loved Cheers. It. Bye. Right. So, that brings us to our final performer of this evening, which is Mr. Kevin P. Gilday. Uh, Kevin is an award winning writer and spoken word artist from Glasgow. He's the curator and co host of Spoken Word Cabaret Night Sonic Youth, who have a podcast every week and a gig on Facebook every other week. Um, he is a National Theatre of Scotland breakthrough writer. He's a BBC Writers Room Scottish voice. Uh, his hit show, Suffering from Scottishness, performed to critical acclaim at Edinburgh Fringe last year. It got a four star review in The Scotsman uh, and on other places. He's performed all over the world from Glasgow to Hollywood, uh, loads of festivals. He's got four books of poetry and also um, two albums for a musical project called Kevin P. Gilday and the Glasgow Cross. Uh, the debut album is available via Iffy Folk Records and Nims and Fugs. Um, and yeah, he's just an absolute fucking diamond. So um, yeah, Kevin, are you there? Are you, are you ready? He's on, he's letting me do, he's letting me do my intro. Hello. How are you doing, mate, you all right? Yeah. I just, uh, well, I didn't want to step in your your amazing intro there. I wanted you to read like the full fucking bio, just the full thing all the way to the bottom. <laughs> I mean, I was going to, but like I was making notes by hand and I just, I just got, you've got such an incredible career. I mean, I've got tired, so yeah. I hope that captured enough. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, um, over to you, mate. Over cool. You. Thank you very much, Matt. Cheers. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, everybody that's been joining us tonight. It's been, um, it's been really great to see 
lots of new voices that I've never seen before. And also just to share a, a digital virtual stage with, with Tori again, who I supported the last time she was in Glasgow. Um, so it's great to be back on a bill with, with Tori again. Um, so yeah, I'm Kevin Peagle Day. Going to just read a few poems for you. Um, and I, I'm going to talk for just a wee second so you can adjust to the accent. And then I'll just batter right in. So this is a wee poem about um, something that you might feel in your personal life, but that no poet or indeed artist has ever felt. This is a poem about professional jealousy. It hits me like a binary sledgehammer. Ones and zeros to the gut is there on my social media feed grins another undeserving fuck. A young person, a youth regaling me with the latest success. And so I grip my teeth, gird my loins and deliver my largesse. I'm so happy for you. You deserve this. You smug, jammy cunt. What a great opportunity. Don't forget about us when you're famous. I hope you fail or die. I hope you fail and die. I catch sight of my bloated reflection in a greasy spoon window. Where the beaten face framed in grey. And I wonder if the validation of success will catch up with me before I run out of days. But that's no excuse for jumping the queue for taking the plaudits when it wasn't your turn. Some of us were here before you, some of us are old a run. And I want you to succeed in living your dreams, I really, truly do. Just not at the expense of me fulfilling mine. Trust me, I need this more than you. It should have been me. My dues were paid when my rent wasn't. Gigs to empty rooms for an empty wallet. I played this game up and down the country, convincing myself that it would get better. When all I got were some hollow compliments and a final reminder letter. I just want to be on a fucking nationwide advert. Is that too much to ask? I could write a sonnet about personal loans, a haiku about mortgages. I just want to be on the telly. Maybe then my family would understand what it is I actually fucking do. And I find myself wondering, were these people good at sports at school? Are they genetically predisposed, destined for greater things? And I consider that perhaps some of us are born to lose just as some are born to win. Because hard work doesn't always equate to reward. You only have to look around you to tell. If that was the case in Bangladeshi sweatshop children would live in a palace instead of a cell. But sometimes middle class confidence trumps working class graft on the greasy pole of achievement more than every cussed inbox rejection with the melancholy of a family bereavement. Jealousy will gnaw like a rabid dog eat you alive from the inside out, leaving you vapid and empty like an Instagram poetry account. But there's no panacea, no magic bullet to make minds and tastes contort. Working so hard you disappear inside yourself and file a missing persons report. The truth is that not everyone makes it. Fate is as fickle as it is true. You can work every hour to grasp your own genius, but you can't make people fucking like you. Cheers. Uh, thank you very much for everyone watching at home. Um, these Zoom gigs are, are weird because you know people are watching and you're working hard to, to entertain them, but you're not getting that immediate buzz of them kind of applauding or, or people shouting or, or any of that kind of a stuff. So I'll just assume you're all going apeshit at home uh, and really enjoying it, just for, for my own mental health more than anything. Um, I'm going to barter in and do a few poems now, three 
poems in a row, a, a triptych, sounds like a total wank saying that, but a triptych of, uh, of Scottish poems, kind of about different aspects of, uh, of Scottishness and Scottish culture. Um, there might be some references that you don't understand or you don't get or go over your head. That's cool. Don't worry about it. Um, just go along with it and, and uh, imagine you're an extra in train spotting of whatever it is you, you, you associate with Scotland. Anyway, this one's about accents. I feel like everyone can relate to this in some way because everyone's from somewhere. Um, but it's very specifically about what it means to have a Scottish accent and what that accent means in, in different parts of the world. Um, so this is a poem called This Voice. This voice is a currency, a value attached to a global economy, mass stock rising and falling by destination. Its nuances dissected for a weakness that is easy to find the history between the syllables. This voice heralds monsters from lochs and parts pounds from Americans with the implicit understanding that this is an authentic experience. Ye olde facsimile, Nessie in sheep's clothing. This voice got my head kicked in at school. Too working class to be middle class, too middle class to be working class, so in retaliation, I swallowed a dictionary. Started coughing up words my classmates found hysterical, hoping one day they'd reach ears attuned to their power. This voice is a cultural commodity, a verbal conversation piece. In Spain, it is an invitation, a honey trap for horny middle-aged women. In England, a 3 a.m. threat. In Edinburgh, an unintelligible Ouija alarm. In North America, a link to the past. In Catalonia, a broken promise. This voice caused me to say the word chips five times in a London pub with a different intonation on each occasion. Chips. Chips. Chops, chips, chips. There's always so many ways to say the word chips before you point to the menu in exhaustion. Ah, chips, mate. This voice is the embodiment of the Scottish cringe. Change the channel if you hear your rare timbre reflected back. What a beamer. What a ready, the embarrassment of a brogue, pushed to the margins, reduced to a punchline and a press round. Struggling to be heard, so demoralised that it imitates hate. This voice is an international invitation to imitation. A cordial proposition for your best, Sean Connery. It's a fetish that makes your granny swoon every time I say the word we. Switching between modes of communication with consummate ease, binding just the right frequency. Just how Scottish would you like me to be? This voice made Brigadoon appear from the mist. This voice will shrek to emerge from the swamp. This voice mopped the hallways of Springfield Elementary. This voice was responsible for the film Highlander. This voice bumped the tits off of Mrs. Doubtfire. This voice beamed up Scotty. This voice ate a baby. This voice filters the fragments of my being shapes them into a guttural noise that expresses my need to be treated as more than the sum of my vocal cords. This voice is Scotland incarnate, to be met with derision from my own. This voice can't seem to stay quiet, even when no one 
this lesson. Cheers. Um, so yeah, that was one about accents. Um, this next one in my kind of um, three-part Scottish poetry bit in the middle of my set here. Um, this is about the neighbourhood that I live in. This is about a, a part of Glasgow uh, in the East End um, where I currently reside. This is to live and die in Deniston. No poetry in the library. No bobbies on the beat. Just a kernel of despair that cripples the spine of the street. Furnished with broken TVs and flickering streetlights. Carpeted with a freshly excreted layer of dog shite. Welcome to Deniston, Glasgow's wild east. The eternal heart of darkness, the belly of the beast. Rampage and bam seeking riotous acclaim to an audience of pensioners fraught with disdain. Insipid junkies, fucked earth and stealthy, communicating coded speech unintelligible to the healthy. The woman with the crumpled face is at pains to explain why a pack of rabid dogs all have racist names. Venetian statues unsuccessfully guard the shrubbery. Against rubber-legged drunks dying for a pee While delinquent youths maraud and brawl Citing their influences as religion and football Cathartic exhibitions of frustration and regret A legacy of disappointment summarily beset Small men in ridiculous garb march down the street Attempted to twirl a bat and menacingly to a monophonic beat, a redundant display of cultural stupidity, an outdated show absent of validity, walking in formation, bitter and plastered, burdensome, boorish, bile-ridden bastards. But despite the eccentrics and the undesirables, despite the colour, it's undeniable. Despite cohabiting with every weirdo you could send, I'd rather be here than the fucking West End. Cheers. Um, obviously, if you if you're not from Glasgow or have never been to Glasgow, the West End is is where the posh people live, um, and we hate them for it as we should do, um, until the day comes where we can eat the rich. Um, the the small men in ridiculous garb that I'm referencing, um, that's the the orange walk, which is somehow still a thing, still a thing, uh, in Glasgow, um, even in 2020. Although they didn't get to walk this year, um, due to you know coronavirus, even though you know they're literally spreading the virus of sectarianism wherever they go. Anyway. I'm going to do the, the last of my, my wee Scottish section of my set here. Um, this is a, a poem about, I think, I like to think of this one as a, a kind of alternative to a, a Visit Scotland advertising campaign where they're like, Visit Scotland is beautiful. We've got, we've got locks and shit and this fucking distilleries. It's great. This is my Scotland, this is the way I see it. It's all the juxtapositions, it's the contrasts, it's the, the contradictions of the place uh, and how they all add up into this weird hole that makes sense and is something approaching an identity. So yeah, this is my Scotland is. My Scotland is fucking freezing. It's full of hills I'll never climb. It's fizzing with anger. Is your old da? Is that lassie you fancied for the art school with the blonde hair? I forget her name. My Scotland. It's Jackie Bird at the Bells. It's two rolls and fritter with brown sauce. Is what school did you go to? Is a hoff and a hoff. Is the traffic on the M8 and the lashing rain is in blue carrier bags for the 24-hour shop? My Scotland 
is curry sauce on fucking everything. It's gangsters at the Regano. Is somebody putting a 20p in the machine when you're short your bus fare? It's call centres where there used to be shipyards. Is the Wallace Monument straining against the wind? Is a fiver a pint in Edinburgh during the fringe? My Scotland is put out by a last minute penalty. Is nuclear submarines down the water? Is cancer taking old Agnes? Nearly a year after John died. His last orders at Slazy's is a chip mark that won't ever heal. Is anyone but England is not afraid to feel. My Scotland is reinventing itself. One tonner prize at a time is remembering Thatcher. Is remembering how we changed the world. Is unable to come to the phone right now. Is tourists at Glencoe is watching the juniors in Gaelic. My Scotland is I can't go into that pub. No, with this colour of jacket on. Is never getting what you voted for. Is a lock in that won't ever end. And is, is an ice cold can of iron brew on a hungover Sunday. Is talking shite to a haggis and pretending you like. My Scotland is complex. My Scotland is contradictory. My Scotland is confused. My Scotland is right place, wrong time, repeatedly. My Scotland is tired of waiting for a better future. My Scotland is whatever we want it to be. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, and also thank you for indulging me in my uh, pseudo-political ranting, which obviously I do need in my life. Um, I'll get back onto the, the actual poems now, um, the ones that are about other things in life. Um, I should point out that all the, the poems I'm reading tonight are in my uh, latest book, Sad Songs for White Boys, um, which brings together 10 years of my best work uh, into one publication. Um, you can buy that on my website, which is kevinpeagleday.com, um, or straight from the publisher, which is the amazing speculative books, sorry, speculative books, um, who are a kind of DIY indie publisher based in Glasgow. Um, if you have the time, then you should definitely check out their website anyway. They do great stuff, including a subscription service where you pay like, a, I don't know what it is, like a tenner a month. And you just get a book of poetry every month, which is a pretty cool thing. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a wee. So I'm going to just read, I know a few poems, and then we'll get you back to Matt. This is a, a poem about how I hate all other poets. It's called, I've fallen out of love with poetry. Fallen out of love with poetry. It's no me, it's you. That spark has gone wandering amidst countless painful open mics, anxiety inducing slams, colleague politics, and the complete absence of ever being paid. I've fallen out of love with poetry. Because of your fucking whiny voices and earnest subject matter, contrivedly crafted for universal agreement. I'm glad we've sorted out that racism is bad. I was a wee bit sketchy before you took the mic. I've fallen out of love with poetry, with your mid Atlantic inflections and borrowed speech patterns. Because you all learn to slam from Americans on YouTube instead of saying what you feel. I've fallen out of love with poetry. Because your body issues are not important. Unlike mine. Of course you're an outsider. You read fucking poetry. 
This is a club for weirdos. This much we know. I've fallen out of love with poetry. Could you write too many love poems? They don't come easily to me. Grand metaphors like quixotic sculpture hewn from the marble of your affections or something. I've fallen out of love with poetry because rhyming is seen as uncool despite it being a useful linguistic tool. A literary device taught to kids at school. Yet I stand up here like a mawkish school because my poetic preference marks me out as a fool. Or something. I've fallen out of love with poetry. Because these young people are actually quite good. And maybe there's no room for a grown man's weary compositions and chronic oversharing. I've fallen out of love with poetry because it's fallen out of love with me. Thank you. I don't really hate all poets. I'm just kidding on. I'm just, it's just a character that I'm playing. It's not true. They're actually all great and uh, they're all get great mental health as well. That's what I'd say about all the poets. Their mental health is all straight across the board, intact, high level. Um, it's funny. You, you, it's like I can't tell if when I'm taking the piss, people are laughing. They're like, that's funny he's taking the piss. Or people are like, he's just talking to himself. He's went mental. Anyway, got another couple short ones and then I'll be on my way. Um, yeah, I'll do this first and then I'll, I'll do the plugging after that. Um, this is a poem about knowing your enemy. This is a poem about the people that we see every day. We don't know that they're sick in the head, but they are. This is a guide. This is how to spot a Tory. If you don't say... Cheers, mate. When you got off the bus, then you're probably a Tory. If you don't watch The Simpsons at six o'clock, then you're probably a Tory. If you've never been sick at the Pleasure Beach in Blackpool, then you're probably a Tory. If you've never had to use a coin star machine to buy a bottle of wine, then you're probably a Tory. If you're not sure what fit bottom you support, then you're probably a Tory. If you're unsure of the etiquette in regards to your granny being on a bus, then you're probably a Tory. If you didn't have a party when Thatcher died, then you're probably a Tory. If you don't shout, get it right up ye, yo cunt. Every time the Queen is on the telly, then you're probably a Tory. If you don't lament the loss of gingy bottles as a self-contained economic currency, then you're probably a Tory. If you get someone else to iron your clothes, in fact, if you even iron your clothes, then you're probably a Tory. But if you think that wealth trickles down, that doctors are overpaid, that immigration is eroding the country, that privatisation is the key, that poverty is a myth, then you're definitely a fucking Tory. Cheers. Okay, um, I'll leave you with one more. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you so much to Matt. Um, 
for putting this event on, but also for generally just being one of the, the sound guys in the spoken word scene in the UK, somebody who, who looks after the artist, someone who, who works hard and makes sure everyone gets paid and looks after everybody. Uh, and that doesn't happen as often as it should do. So when you work for somebody like that and you get a gig with someone like that, then you have to be super thankful for it. And Matt is one of those guys. Um, as an artist that's doing amazing things in his own right, but also a promoter who's putting on great stuff uh, and giving lots of new voices a chance to to step up and, and say what they have to say as well. And that's all fucking great stuff as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, I'm going to read this this last poem for you before I do. I'll say, I've been Kevin Peagle Day um, and you can check out all my stuff on my, my website, kevinpeagleday.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, fucking all this stuff. Um, you can buy books, you can buy CDs, you can buy whatever. Um, and yeah, get in touch. I'm also running a, a kind of uh, online writer's poetry workshop thing. So if you want to uh, learn some poetry with me, then drop me an email as well, get involved. Uh, anyway, this is a, a wee poem that I like to end with. Um, this is about something that happens for, for everybody, I feel, where you're kind of confronted with the kind of life you could be living, um, but you've decided to do something else. This is about that awkward experience when a, a man comes round to your house to fix your boiler and you're not really sure what to say to him. There's a worky in my house and he's fixing the boiler or something. I'm not too sure. But he wears overalls and boots just like my dad. There's a worky in my house and I should probably offer him tea. But that seems offensive. When did we decide the all workies like tea. There's a worky in my house and I'm watching him work in silence. It got really weird over a minute ago. There's a worky in my house and he's about my age so he should really know the score, follow the rules, mate. Ask me if I saw the game. If I saw the game last night, well, that team was shite and the manager will soon be on his way. They spent millions on that guy and all he does is fucking die. And at least then, I'd have something to say. There's a worky in my house. And I wonder if he judges wallpaper and furniture. Probably no. He'll have seen worse than mine. There's a worky in my house. And he knows all about it. Pipes and stuff. But all I can do is write bad poetry. There's a worky in my house and I really shouldn't feel this level of angst existential or otherwise because he does something useful just like my dad thank you very much everybody thanks for joining us oh mate absolutely class that loved it so good cheers good. man and uh, well done to everyone else as well. Obviously, uh, Tori was wonderful, and Vic and Julie, and earlier on, Lane and Mary and Pauline. Um, just beautiful poetry. I'm, I'm dead, dead happy that um, that this event's happened, and I've, I've had time on my life sitting here watching this. It's been great, good, on it? So, uh, yeah, thank you all for joining in, and thanks for your kind words, Kev. Obviously, that means a lot. Um, yeah, is everyone? Oh, yeah, people are turning the cameras on. We can do a little. I'll take a screenshot afterwards and use that when I when I do my Instagram post in the morning. Um, yeah, no, thanks all so much for 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 
sharing your time with us and sharing your poetry with us tonight. And to everybody watching on YouTube, we've, uh, sorry, everybody watching on Facebook, we've had a good number of viewers all night. Some beautiful comments that um, you guys will all be able to see later on. And uh, if anybody hasn't donated yet, please donate to Hyde Park Book Club because we're an absolutely fantastic venue. And the, there's so much more than a venue. They are a community hub. So, so yeah, thanks very much to everybody. Um, I'm going to stop the broadcast in a second and then say goodbye to you all off camera. Not that I say anything that different, but I just like to maintain the air of showbiz. Um, so, yeah.